That was awesome. Condensation! It's amazing! It's everywhere! It's what makes skies go from perfectly clear to super cloudy. It's what makes the dewdrops on the grass in the morning. Today, we're gonna look at how we can make our own condensation happen inside of a bottle, getting us a cloud in a bottle. We're gonna use this modified bottle to make this alcohol condense. You only need a few things to make this work. You need a plastic bottle. Clear works best. You need a drill to drill a hole into the top of the cap. You need an air valve that you can pick up at any hardware store. And you need an air compressor or pump. Now, with any experiment or demonstration using air pressure, you wanna make sure you're being saved. So make sure you have your protective eyewear and you may wanna wear a glove. Water vapor is evaporating all the time. Warm air will hold a lot more water vapor than cold air, and as that air rises, it loses its temperature, and as the temperature goes down, that water starts to come out into its liquid form and condense into a kind of suspended state, forming our cloud. As water is being heated in the teapot, it evaporates more and more quickly until it begins to boil. The small hole in the teapot spout only lets a small amount of escaping vapor through at once, so the vapor squeezes together, building up pressure, pushing through as fast as it can, giving us this lovely whistle. Water vapor is an invisible gas, and right as it exits through the spout, you can see that the water vapor isn't reflecting any light to let us see it. But as it expands, it cools off, and the vapor condenses into liquid water dispersed in the mostly nitrogen air around it, just like a cloud. Of course, the clouds we're used to seeing are not heated by the fire of a stove, but by a much more powerful engine, the sun. As the sun heats the system, in this case the surface and the air around this pond, more and more water evaporates off the surface of the water. Of course, the sun can provide enough energy or heat to evaporate enough water to eventually condense, no problem. But if we want to do it using pressure via an air pump, it's much easier if we use rubbing alcohol which has a much lower boiling point than water, and thus evaporates sooner. How does alcohol vapor get into the air in the first place? The alcohol is evaporating constantly until it saturates the air inside the bottle. Remember, higher temperatures hold a lot more vapor than lower temperatures. That includes alcohol vapor. Now this is isopropyl alcohol, not ethanol that we're used to drinking in any alcoholic beverages. This stuff will mess you up. It's very poisonous, so don't get fancy and try to breathe it in. Don't try to drink it. You will go blind. In the teapot, heat is added to the system, and all the particles inside start moving way faster around, bumping into each other and the walls of the teapot, increasing the pressure. Now, this principle can be done in reverse. If we were to just add pressure, the temperature would rise in effect. We need to achieve a temperature drop. We're gonna do that by adding pressure into the bottle to increase the temperature of the air inside the bottle and then suddenly releasing it, dropping the temperature very quickly, allowing the alcohol inside to condense. The surface area helps a lot with evaporation, so we swish around the alcohol inside the bottle before adding any pressure. That's crazy. Yeah. When we add pressure back into the bottle, the air is reheated and the condensed alcohol is re-evaporated. So the cloud you're seeing is not alcohol vapor, it's actual dispersed liquid alcohol. Thank you.